This is part three in our receivables and accounting from collectibles series, and we'll be discussing the direct write-off method for accounting for uncollectible accounts. So one thing to, to make note of is that when using the direct write-off method, there will not be an allowance account as there was under the two allowance methods we've talked to in the prior part to this series. Uh, under the direct write-off method, you actually wait until you determine that a specific customer will not be collected, and then you write that customer off. So let's look at Bob Rassler, who is an attorney in Los Angeles. Rassler uses the direct write-off method to account for uncollectible receivables. At May 31st, Rassler's account receivables total $14,000. During June, he earned revenue of $20,000 on account and collected $19,000 on account. He also wrote off uncollectible receivables of $2,000. Use the direct write-off method to journalize Rassler's write-off of the uncollectible receivables. So again, we're actually writing off the uncollectible accounts that we've deemed to be uncollectible. Just like the second entry we were doing in our allowance account method. So we debit the uncollectible account expense of $2,000 and we credit the account receivables that we are actually writing off. So it would be the account receivable subsidiary ledgers with the customer name attached. And the second part of this question is what is Rassler's balance of accounts receivable at June 30th? And then does he expect to collect all of this amount? Well, we know our beginning accounts receivable is $14,000 and we earned revenues on account of $20,000, and we've collected $19,000 up to this point, but we just wrote off $2,000 of our accounts receivables. So that's a reduction to our accounts receivables. So our ending balance is $13,000, and because we are using the direct write-off method, we only write off accounts that we do not anticipate collecting. Therefore, Rassler would expect to collect the $13,000 that is remaining in the accounts receivable account. So similar to our um, diagram that we had in the prior part under the allowance method, let's say we made our sale November the 9th. Under the direct write-off method, we would not make an adjustment at the end of the fiscal year. We would expense this when we determined a specific account to be uncollectible. So in looking at this timeline, you should automatically see that this violates the matching principle. We recorded the revenue on November the 9th of a particular year, and we didn't expense the account that we didn't think we were going to collect until the next year. So the matching principle has been violated here.